Nowhere to Call Home by Cynthia De Felice, Chapter 15 Wanting to put an end to her disheartening thoughts, Frankie stood up abruptly, closed the box core door, and sat back down on the floor. She was very hungry. How about some of that grub, she suggested. Stewpot pulled out the food and trimmed the mold from the cheese. They sat munching quietly. I sure wish we had a light, Frankie said. Don't tell me you're scared of the dark, Stewpot teased. Frankie snorted to let him know she was nothing of the sort. No, I was just thinking, if there was some light, we could read. Read what? I've got some books in my bag. Stewpot didn't answer right away. Frankie could feel him hesitating in the darkness. I got a candle, he said finally. You do? Frankie said excitedly. Where is it? Hold your horses, I'll get it. Frankie could hear Stewpot fumbling in his bundle. Then she heard the scratch of a match, and the soft glow of a candle illuminated Stewpot's face. He tipped the candle sideways until melted wax ran into a puddle on the boxcar floor, then stuck the candle into the puddle and held it there until the wax hardened. That do you? he asked. It's swell, said Frankie, feeling around in her bag and pulling out her books. Here, you pick which one you want. Nah, said Stewpot. I don't really like reading all that much. But have you ever read this one? Frankie urged, holding up The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Nope. I bet you'd like it. And this one. I told you, didn't I? Stewpot interrupted. I don't go for that reading stuff. But I... Frankie stopped. She loved to read and was used to spending most of her leisure hours doing so. She found Stewpot's attitude difficult to understand. But if he wasn't interested in reading, she supposed that was his business. Well, I might read for a while if you don't mind. Why should I mind? Said Stewpot shortly. He was acting awfully touchy all of a sudden, but Frankie couldn't think what she might have said to upset him, and his face was outside the circle of light, so she couldn't make out his expression. You feel okay, Stu? She asked. Yeah, he said. My throat's kind of sore is all. Frankie didn't think that was all that was bothering Stewpot, but she didn't know what else to say. She looked down at the books in her lap, trying to decide which one she felt like reading. That one looks good, Stewpot said in a low voice, pointing to the colorful picture on the cover of the Uncle Remus stories. Surprised, Frankie handed it to him. Here. Pushing it back, Stewpot said, Nah, you. You want me to read it? Frankie asked, confused. You mean out loud? Yeah, said Stewpot, adding quickly, unless you don't want to. No, Frankie said eagerly. I do. She remembered how Mrs. Bailey used to read to her at night when she was little and how she had loved lying snug in her bed listening. She opened the book. She had to hold it right down on the boxcar floor with the candle in front of it, being careful not to burn her fingers or the pages when she turned them. Stewpot shifted about, lying on his back and arranging the bundle beneath his head for a pillow as Frankie read. She had read all the stories many, many times, but she never grew tired of Briar Rabbit's sassy tricks. Stewpot seemed to enjoy them too, laughing out loud from time to time while she read three stories in a row. Finally, she said, My eyes are about to give out reading in this candlelight. Do you want to take a turn? Stewpot yawned. Nah, I'm getting kind of sleepy. Frankie yawned also. Me too. She put the book away and blew out the candle, then settled next to Stewpot in the small area that wasn't taken up by orange crates. Stewpot was quiet, and Frankie wondered if he was already asleep. She wondered as well what time it was. Time, she reflected, didn't seem to exist once you were inside a moving boxcar. Day and night, morning and afternoon, bedtime and mealtime all lost their former significance. There was only the darkness and the cold and the steady noise of the wheels below and the feeling of hurtling through space toward an unknown destination. Without Stewpot, Frankie thought, she'd be frightened and lonely. But as it was, she could almost feel his strength and courage and assurance becoming part of her. You know, Stewpot said in a slow, drowsy voice, that Br'er Rabbit? He's littler than Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear, so he's got to be smarter. I was thinking, it's kind of like us bows. The cops and the bulls, they're bigger than us, and richer than us. And they got all the other big, rich, powerful guys on their side. And we're like the rabbits, trying to run and hide, and stay out of their way, and still get by. Got to be tricky when you're a bow, he murmured, his voice so full of sleep, Frankie could barely hear him. Got to be real tricky. His voice faded away, and Frankie could hear him breathing unevenly in his sleep. She lay for a while in the darkness before drifting off. She awakened once from a dream in which she was a rabbit running along a railroad track being chased by foxes and bears with human faces. On and on she ran, looking for her hole, but she couldn't find it. There was nowhere to hide, nowhere that was safe. The creatures were about to catch her in their sharp gleaming teeth when she woke up, shivering with cold. Stewpot still slept, breathing through his mouth. From time to time, he coughed a deep, rattling cough. Frankie lay beside him, trying not to listen. She rolled into a ball, hugging herself to try to stop the shaking. It was a long time before she fell back to sleep.